to where are you? Oh, there you are. Well, if you come over here, you'll find a wonderful surprise. You'll have to plug into the central computer to hear what it is. That's right. No, it's not a phase vector. It's your Christmas present. Coming up on episode 12, our holiday edition of Skywalking Through Neverland. I have a Star Wars car with laser guns. You don't think people get out of my way? I saw Jedi Tink and I was sold, so... <laughs> you get to look at Star Wars again through the lens of a child. It was pretty cool to meet like-minded people who are just as geeky as we are. I think people should be ambassadors for fandom, not gatekeepers. Until we finally mm-hmm. realize that Khan is going to be the bad guy for episode 7. <laughs> so yeah. do you feel like men... Ver- Man of Steel 2 is becoming Justice League of America 1. Show of hands out there. Who has gained some holiday weight? I thought so. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're like, done. Good night, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Great, thanks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. There it is. Listen, listen. A billion years in the making. Welcome to Neverland. What do you know? <laughs> you'll laugh, you'll cry, you'll kiss three bucks goodbye. <laughs> Coming to you live from the Hilton in Pasadena, California. This is Sarah, also known as Jedi Tink. And this is Richard, also known as Sith Rich. It's Skywalking Through Neverland. Episode 12. This is the podcast that celebrates fandom. We spotlight fans who make fan films, who write fan fiction, cosplayers. If you're an active fan, we want to hear from you. Now, this week has been a little difficult to get this. It's been a little nuts. Yeah. (laughs) I know it's been a couple of weeks since our last one, and and thanks for hanging in there with us. In fact, right now, as we speak, (laughs) we're right in between jobs, so Sarah and I hold up in a... An empty banquet room at the Pasadena Hilton. Yeah, because later on, I'm going to be an elf. And we're, we're recording this podcast underneath, literally, a big white Christmas tree. Oh, it's very pretty. <laughs> on today's show, we're going to hear from lots of fans. Lots of fans who've had a very, very busy year in fandom. And they're going to tell us what their biggest moments were in 2013 in terms of their fandom their low points, and what they're looking forward to in 2014. We were able to get Kristen Hackett of Sci-Fi's Fangasm. She was the one always dressed in cute little outfits, Star Wars outfits and superhero outfits. Tardis dresses. <laughs> She's not hard to miss. No, no. She, she looks great in those body-conscious dresses. We also have Sean, Obi Sean Kenobi. And you may know him because he's the guy that zips around L.A. in his H or Z-Wing fighters. <laughs> and at most Star Wars events, he's the one with the Yoda puppet. Next, we're going to get Trisha Barr's take on the year. And she's had a pretty exciting year herself. I think Trisha's got like 35 podcasts herself. Yeah. <laughs> this has been the year of the podcast for her. Yeah. Her latest, Fangirls Gone Rogue. Mm-hmm. Speaking of podcasters, we also have to have Bald Solo on, Robert Bapst of the Bald Solo Podcast. You may know him because he's the bald Han Solo. (laughs) Yep. Uh, We met a couple at the D23 Expo convention, Lauren Correa and Josh Kelly, and we're going to speak with them about their year and their Disney exciting high points. So before we talk to other fans on our show, we wanted to go over our own high points and low points of 2013. And there have been lots of them. Yeah. <laughs> so wh- why don't you start us off by okay. uh, giving us a couple of your highlights in terms of fandom for 2013. Okay. Well, one of my highlights happened January 2013 of this year, and that was the Tinkerbell Half Marathon at Disneyland. And this year, I was actually able to take my 16-year-old friend, Sarah, her name is Sarah as well, and uh, bring her around the park and, and, and run the half marathon along with my friend Monique. So it was a really fun experience seeing and, and doing this event through a 16-year-old, <laughs> 16-year-old's eyes. And this is the marathon where you get to run around Anaheim as well as inside the Disney parks. Yes. You run, you run inside Disneyland and California Adventure? Yes. It's 13.1 miles. You run around, you run through, you run backstage. All while the characters. S- yeah, all while the sun is just rising over the earth, and it's amazing. <laughs> it's like, it's like this, this nether world. It's like Neverland. Um, but 
And this is your second or third? That was my second second Tinkerbell half marathon. And what place did you did you hold? I'm I'm in like the top you came third. In first. No. <laughs> you came in first? I wish I would have been on the Disney Parks blog had I come in first. <laughs> so you were like you were first if there was a first place for number three hundred and seventy two? I was the first running Rapunzel to cross the oh, line. Oh there you go. See? <laughs> See? Don't tell me I don't listen. I know. <laughs> there you All go. right. Quid pro quo here for me. Yes. One of the high points of 2013 for for my fandom, I finally got to finish my Star Wars fan film, TPZ. Yay. Now, this has been in the works for three years. Mm-hmm. Three years. And I just had the, a, a heck of a time trying to find an effects person. Well, I found eight of them. <laughs> but seven None of them, them just disappeared yeah. without a trace. You know who you are. Mm-hmm. So that was my big big fandom moment in 2013. So if anyone out there has not seen it, go to our homepage and you can click right on it. TPZ. It's like TMZ in the Star Wars universe. Hold on. Give me a couple of seconds to stop laughing. Okay. Now it's your turn. (laughs) Okay. Well, moving right along to May of 2013, I got to check off a bucket list item. I got to go. My mom was in town for Mother's Day, and so I felt it was a great time to go to the Mother's Day crazy awesome brunch at the Disneyland oh. Hotel. Oh my goodness! Oh. <laughs> it was like it's like seventy five dollars a person, but <laughs> we you, ate our weight. Y- yes, in, in just tiramisu. We were there for three hours. You could you oh, could we were there longer than yeah, that. Yeah, you could take pictures with all the princesses around the hall, including Minnie and Mickey dressed in fun little outfits, and and there was live music. There was like four different stations of food everywhere we got there around noon yep had a lunch and we were so filled that we didn't move until dinner time <laughs> so we had dinner <laughs> got two, two meals in one yep yeah for 75 dollars i was gonna have two meals in one yeah <laughs> and several of their lotions in the bathroom and i and I, yeah and i couldn't <laughs> wait to become a mom to go to this brunch so i just they took the excuse that when my mom was in town all right mom i'm taking you to this because i really wanted to go Thanks, Mom. <laughs> I think it took us until November to lose that weight. Oh, yeah. And now we gained it back. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> it's holiday weight. Everyone does it. Yep. Show of hands out there who's gained some holiday weight. I thought so. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I can speak for myself. I know I have. So another big high point for me is skywalking through Neverland. That is one of my high points of 2013 in terms of being an active fan. Yeah. I'd always heard so many other people doing it, and I thought, wow, that looks like a lot of fun. And mm-hmm. we, we always, living in LA, we've always been doing so many things that we would put out a Facebook post saying, hey, look what we're doing. Mm-hmm. But that could only reach so many different so many. people. But a lot of people kept on saying, oh, you guys look like you have so much fun. Yeah. So we thought, <laughs> you know what? Let's roll all that into a podcast. We do. We just do so much stuff in terms of our fandom, whether it's going to Disneyland or doing fan films or doing a podcast. We wanted to share it with you people and then spread the wealth. Mm -hmm. Like we've been saying all along, if you have something that you want to spotlight, we're here for you, spotlighting the fan. Another big moment for us in fandom was Kamikaze. Mm -hmm. We hadn't gone to a a convention since, well, we'd gone to the uh, D23 Disney Expo and we have gone to the Star Wars celebrations. That's really been about it. And Comic-Con, that's just off the table. Never yeah. again for Comic-Con. It's just too crowded. Yeah. Now, I know some of you have heard our recap of Kamikaze, but my most exciting moment of Kamikaze was Ashley Eckstein recognized me. <laughs> <laughs> so that was I made so eye cool. contact and said, you're hey, Jedi Tank. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> anyway. That was yeah. exciting. For those of you who have not gone to Kamikaze, I definitely, definitely recommend it highly. Mm-hmm. It's, it's regained my love for going to conventions yeah. once again. The conventions that we've been to this year have really been just awesome, like including the D23 Expo, which was a high point for me. Um, the very beginning of that expo, I got into a Disney Parks blog meetup which was exciting because those meetups are only like 25 or 50 people and you have to be like on the ball on Twitter watching to see when the Disney Parks blog is going to announce something and then you have to like... that Twitter bell goes off, yeah. she's right on it. Yeah, and so you have to like email in right away with your name, the certain info that they want and then you send it in and then you wait for them to respond with and then 
my name was on that list of 50 people. And so I got to go and run 2.3 miles with these Disney Parks blog fans and meet with Fantasia Mickey. There's this really cute picture of me and Fantasia Mickey that I got. And it was exciting. It was very, very cute. Yes. <laughs> but you know what? I would say first and foremost, mm-hmm. I would put Skywalking Through Neverland on top because from doing the podcast, we've just met so many people we, we would not have met. That's very true. All these people we have no, we would not have really well, come in contact yeah. with. Yeah, I mean, all, actually, a lot of these people we've met at conventions before, but we had never had a reason to stay in contact with them until the podcast. It's fun to stay in touch with these people and begin a friendship. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And now, you know, let's, let's take a little darker turn here mm-hmm. into the lower points. You yes. know, there can be no good without bad. It's true. That's what I learned in my Emerson College art class. There's no good without bad. And no bad without good. That's true. So, so you, you need to have the low points to let those high points stand out. Right. So in your opinion, what's been a couple of low points in 2013? Well, I only have one real low point. So why don't you go first? Well, I'm going to go with the, with the cancellation of many Star Wars projects. That was a huge, huge blow to my fandom because I was looking forward to things like Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith being released 3D in theaters, mm-hmm. and I was looking forward to Star Wars detours uh, by Seth Green. Yes, but on top of all that is the cancellation of the Clone Wars back yeah. in March. Now that was shocking to uh, me. Yeah, so there was a lot of low points in Star Wars fandom in 2013, but little by little, Disney's beginning to give back. Yeah, yeah. We have Rebels coming up. We have new movies and spinoff movies and, and all kinds of stuff. So, now that I vented all my low points, mm-hmm. I have I one feel low better. point. Then, okay, yes, yeah, go yeah. on, go on. Yeah, my one low point happened at the D twenty three Expo. It was actually the costume contest, because <laughs> now when I would, when I entered Jedi Tink into the costume contest at Star Wars Celebration six, well, it was met with high praise and it was very exciting, and I got an award and you got two awards. Yeah, I got two awards. She was so, nominated the most glittery Jedi. Yep. <laughs> my very own special award, and then I got second place in my category of Jedi. And it was very well run, the Star Wars convention. The same people had been running it for years, and uh, yeah. So then we get to the D23 Expo con- um, costume contest. And this is D23. This, this ain't no it's Disney. backyard convention. Yeah. So first of all, it seemed well run from, from the website uh, and picking of of people and everything. So we were notified that we got picked and that we were to prepare a one minute um, presentation presentation on stage to yeah. which you could either, you could have music, you can have your own music, you, ha- you can have your own like- and You choreographed your vocal little track. number. A- absolutely. Jedi moves, yeah. lightsaber twirls and twists. Oh yeah, yeah, we, we recorded, we, we wrote a script, you wrote a script. Um, I voiced it. I voiced it over and recorded it. I set it to music, uh, with your help, of course. You were directing it, <laughs> and and then we came up with this choreographed routine, which I practiced and practiced and practiced. So here I am, you know, all prepared, and I walk up to the costume contest where we're supposed to, you know, check in for the day, and they say, and I get, I hand them my CD, and they go, oh yeah, the audio is not working. You're not going to get to oh. do your your audio set, and I'm and. Yeah, I think All my the face. Work you put into that. I think too. my face fell about ten stories. Your face, and I think everyone else's face, who also prepared. Yeah. A one-minute choreographed sketch. Yeah, there was a lot of us upset about that. Yeah, something was broken. An engineer didn't show mm-hmm. up. Yeah, an engineer didn't show up. Also, the MC didn't that was originally up. scheduled did not show up. Yeah. Um, so they pulled a guy from from personnel mm-hmm. and said, "Hey, guess what? You're doing at three o'clock." downstairs yeah. in the international ballroom yeah yeah you're gonna be hosting the costume contest and for for what he did it was a good job he just wasn't really in the disney vein of things some of yeah, his, his jokes, jokes were very off color very off color mm. uh, yeah i didn't of course being in the back um waiting to go on i did not see any of this but i saw you're literally pushed on stage and say you gotta run a masquerade Costume contest. Yeah. So needless to say, I was also disappointed because I didn't win anything. But overall, I mean, the costumes that did win were very good. And kudos to all you cosplayers. <laughs> there are a lot of surprises in 2013. Okay. Can you name any? 
in terms of fandom. Like, okay, I'll go first. Man of Steel, <laughs> oh. worst film of the year. Yeah, unfortunately. It, that was a big surprise because I heard great things about it. We were looking I forward so to looking it. looking forward to it, yeah. And Henry Cavill's cute, you know, like, ugh, I thought it would be fun. But, but no. Uh, that just didn't happen out. No. That just didn't happen out. And the soundtrack was, can I say this, horrible. Well, if you're going to take out the John Williams soundtrack yeah. out of Superman, that that's was part a of why big, it was horrible. That's a big target on your back right yeah. there. The soundtrack was depressing. It's like, this is Superman. You're, it's supposed to be uplifting. Well, his and, costume was depressing. Yeah. And for me, that's, that's the whole thing. Yeah. Don't mess with the costume. Once again, for you, it's the costumes. For me, it's the music. Bright, he's a Boy Scout. Give him the bright blues, the bright yellows, the bright reds. Don't give him all these muted colors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And just, okay. Superman doesn't kill people. No. No. Especially when they're just trying to have a moon over Miami at the IHOP. He doesn't need you <laughs> busting in. Oh, well. So, me, so for me, that was a huge surprise for me. That it just didn't live up the way I wanted it to. Yeah. Anything else? I have no surprises. <laughs> yeah. Just the fact that this podcast has remained on the air and we've been able to keep it up. Even yeah, through you know busy what? times. I'll go with that too. Yeah. <laughs> surprised that we've had people who who have contacted us yeah. and say how much they enjoy the podcast. Absolutely. So, get, get it handed out to you guys. Thank mm-hmm. you, thank you very, very much. We That was a big surprise. I don't think we really had any expectations going in. We just wanted to tell everyone what we're doing and hopefully hear from a couple of people every now and then. But a lot of you have been writing in and, and calling in and, and we just really, really appreciate it. So yeah. it's been a huge surprise. And we've got several people even lined up for more Mouse Droid Mixers in the future. So... Ah, it's, it's very exciting. Yeah, great fun things to come. So now let's turn it over to Skywalking Through Neverland's panel of guests we have. So first up, we have Kristen Hackett. Many of you know her from the reality TV series on sci-fi. Well, you know what? We'll let, we'll let her tell you what her big high points of 2013 were. So, Kristen, you've had a very good 2013 what has yes, been yeah. some of your highlights of the year? Um, well, my number one highlight was definitely getting to be on Fangasm and meeting all of my wonderful roommates and interning for Stan Lee and meeting him um, and Elvira and Adrian Curry and like a ton of people that I never thought I would have the opportunity to work with. Best year ever? Definitely. <laughs> Awesome. And it sounds like from there, you've like been invited to all these awesome events in New York and and got to meet a lot of even more cool people. Yeah, that I actually, um, I had already been doing things like that from working on my website. Oh. Um, So I just really like got to go back to it when I got home. (laughs) What have been some of the benefits of being on Fangasm? Um, Well, we... Of the whole cast was invited to go to Kamikaze, which we helped like put on and everything. Um, so that was a lot of fun. We got to do a bunch of panels. Um, Sarah was at my panel. <laughs> yes. Um, and just really like getting the opportunity to travel and just meet a whole bunch of people that we never would have had the opportunity to meet otherwise. That's so cool. I'm, <laughs> I'm just so excited for you. Thank you. <laughs> Where is Fangasm bringing you next? Um, I don't know. I'm still trying to figure everything out that I'm going to be doing in the future. <laughs> A lot of things are like, could be happening, and I don't know. So we'll see. Oh, it's exciting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so aside from being on Fangasm, what have been your other high points of 2013 in terms of your fandom? Um, well, I was able to attend San Diego Comic-Con for my first time ever. So wow. that was like super exciting to me. Did you do a panel or just as a guest? Um, I went as a guest of somebody that uh, was like moderating panels. She gave me her guest pass. So um, it was really cool. Like I had never gone before. I've gone to so many conventions. Like I travel to so many of them every year and I always like to go to different ones, but I just had never made it to San Diego. I actually... Um, I had never been to California at all before this year, and now I've been there like seven times. <laughs> so, and I lived there for a little while, which is like so crazy to me. You've been to Comic-Con now, and you've been to Kamikaze. 
What's been mm-hmm. your favorite convention? Actually, my favorite convention every year is Baltimore Comic Con, which is much smaller than either of those. Um, but they just always have like the best artists there, and I end up spending so much money on artwork. Like, <laughs> I can't even tell you how much I bought this year. And I always like discover a lot of new artists too, and more um, like indie comics that I wouldn't necessarily see at a bigger convention. And also all of the creators are very, very approachable because it's a smaller scale. Um, And they actually announced at the last one that I was at that next year they're going to be doing it for three days because it was always a two-day convention. So hopefully it'll be like even bigger and even better, even though I don't know how it could be because I love it just the way it is. Oh, that's always good when they do that. I I feel like Kamikaze could almost be four days. Yeah. Oh, totally. Kamikaze was amazing. They had such great uh, benders on the floor, like very, very unique things that you really haven't seen at other conventions. So since Kamikaze, have you been getting recognized on the street outside of conventions? Yeah, I do get recognized um, like walking around the streets in New York City sometimes, and it's always very weird. (laughs) (laughs) So you get strangers looking at you going, huh, where do I know her from? Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, they're wearing an Iron Man T-shirt. Yep. <laughs> it takes you to put the put all the dots together. Excuse me, sir. I'm on fangasm, okay? And they go, ah, that's it. <laughs> well, of course, if Kristen's wearing one of her cute outfits that she wore on fangasm, <laughs> you're definitely more <laughs> yeah. recognizable. Do they just stare or do they come on over and say, are you the girl from fangasm? Uh, well, a lot of people come up to me and ask, and they'll ask about the experience and everything. And it's always really nice meeting people that watched it and enjoyed it. Okay, so Kristen, what has been some of the low points of 2013 for you in fandom? Well, definitely the waiting period to finding out whether or not <laughs> I was going to get to be on Fangasm. <laughs> that was stressful. <sighs> I bet. Um, <laughs> that it actually took um, almost like two and a half years for the show to get made and for them to tell us who was going to be on it. Um, so That's so crazy. It, yeah, it was so weird. Like everything just was so slow. It would be like months of not hearing anything. And then all of a sudden someone would call and be like, oh, we still might do this. And then I just at one point was like, all right, I'm not going to get my hopes up because, you know, they just keep calling and then never calling again. And then all of a sudden everything just happened like really quickly within a two month span. It was like, they called me on like a Friday and we're like, we're flying you to LA on Tuesday and you're going to be here for three days and then we'll like call you another time. And then all of a sudden I was moving and it was so insane. Was it hard to get that kind of time off of work or did they, did they know this was coming? Um, my, my job is actually very understanding of, of taking off and stuff. So I had the days, so it was very easy to tell my boss that I needed off. Was there anything else that you were looking forward to in 2013 that just didn't meet your expectations? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know if I should definitely say this one, but um, because I haven't really continued with it. But I really only watched like the first uh, three episodes of Shield. I knew you were gonna say that. (laughs) Yeah. Really. The first one, like I was so excited for, and there was very good dialogue and everything, but it was definitely slow. So I gave it another chance and then I gave it another chance and I, then I just kind of gave up and I was like, you know what, I'll try to marathon this maybe when it comes out on DVD, but um, it just was not holding my interest, which is sad because I love S.H.I.E.L.D. I love yeah. Marvel. I love Clark Gregg. Yeah, Clark Gregg is the best thing about that show, I think. Yeah, but I, I think they need to do a reboot on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Mm-hmm. They did like a false start. Now when they come back, let's just wipe everything clean and start all over again Mm -hmm. because it was hard to see agent colson this high-ranking officer in shield and now he's with this ragtag team he's kind of babysitting yeah (laughs) yeah (laughs) and it's it's like i've seen online people have called it like the rookies of shield and it does Mm -hmm. seem that way absolutely it was there any surprises in your fandom in 2013 um in 2013 well the end of 2012 leading into 2013, um, in, well, Amazing Spider-Man ended and Superior Spider-Man started, so that was shocking. Okay, for any of us like Sarah who doesn't know much about this, yeah. and by Sarah I mean me and Sarah, can you tell us a little <laughs> bit about that? 
Um, do, I don't know. Do you want me to spoil it for you? I don't know if you're going to read it. Uh, we probably won't. <laughs> I, I'm okay. still reading a book I started in 2010. <laughs> so basically what happened is at the end of Amazing Spider-Man, um, Doc Ock switched brains with Peter Parker and he... Uh, and Peter Parker died in Doc Ock's body. So now um, in the new series, Superior Spider-Man, Doc Ock actually is Spider-Man. Whoa. Yeah. It's crazy. It's really good. <laughs> oh. Mindbender. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Amazing Spider-Man was like the longest running Spider-Man title. And it ended with issue 700. And then they started again with one and Superior Spider-Man. Wow. Seven. When did that start? Um, Superior Spider-Man started at the beginning of 2013, um, and, uh, Amazing Spider-Man ended almost exactly a year ago, like, to the date. Wow. When did the, the Amazing Spider-Man series begin? I guess 700 months ago? Uh, it began in, what was it? It began when Stan Lee was there, so it was, I want to say it was 1962 or 63. Yeah. My goodness. Yeah, it was the longest running Spider Man comic. So if you really love Christmas, love Christmas. come on, let it snow. Come on and let it snow. This is shit, <laughs> isn't it? Yep. Next up, we have our new friends we met at the D23 Expo Lauren Korea and Josh Kelly. <laughs> well, what were your, like, favorite fan moments of 2013 um the d23 expo itself was probably the like the be- the biggest most awesome fan moment for us for 2013 um you couldn't really ask for anything greater from a disney fan than getting to go to that and it was our first time so it was pretty special for both of us yeah we never really experienced anything so amazingly Disney and that really kind of threw you into their process of making the movies and getting to meet other fans. And it was absolutely incredible. It was pretty, pretty cool to meet like-minded people who are just as geeky as we are. And it was kind of like a no judgment zone and everyone was just having so much fun. Is there one moment in D23 that really stood out for you other than meeting us? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course you guys but uh uh biggest moment for me is probably the animation panel and getting to be in the same room as pete doctor and john lasseter and, and getting to witness all of that in person was pretty spectacular getting to see everything that was coming up um things that i like have been waiting for for so long and getting to see clips of it and how they were made and just like little sketches of stuff that's not coming out for three four years from pixar was uh, amazing for me um my favorite moment probably of the whole convention was getting to meet um the woman who played the voice of Belle in the animated Beauty and the Beast movie Paige O'Hara Paige O'Hara oh, thank you Paige O'Hara. O'Hara. yeah I completely lost my mind and I was so excited to meet her and she pulled me aside and said oh my gosh you look so much like me when I was your age and blah 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 and she pointed me out to her husband and it was like the best moment ever oh I was so excited I seriously watched that movie every single day in the second grade and it was the probably the coolest moment I've ever had in my life and it was just completely amazing she was the sweetest person ever and just so down to earth and just truly like an amazing Disney princess idol. <laughs> just yeah, We had met her at a signing at a Disney store uh, a little while back, and okay. I got a great picture of me dancing with her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Now, is there any low points to 2013 that you can remember being a fan? Um, probably for me, I was, I was expecting a little bit more out of um, Oz when it first came out. I mean, I was toward the beginning of the year, but... I, I was hoping it was going to be just a little bit better than it was. Um, it wasn't bad, but it, I, I was expecting it to be a little bit better. Um, and for me, it's probably like the lowest, like the, the like not greatest thing I saw from this from Disney this past year. But yeah, I think that you? was probably the same. I was expecting a little bit more than what really happened. Yeah, I was in the just movie. I'm a huge I'm a Wizard of Oz fan. I'm like I'm you know I've loved it for so long and. Um, I, you know, it's so old. It's a classic. It's, you know, it's great. Judy Garland's amazing. 
And then going into it thinking like, oh, it's going to be a different spin on it. You already have kind of doubts and that didn't help either, but <laughs> I was expecting a little bit more. Yeah, we thought the casting was a little off on that yeah. one. Me too. It wasn't off. It was horrible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't want to be so negative, but. <laughs> well, you know, get Put it call, out there. call it like you see it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If I had been in the room when they were saying James Franco as 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 <laughs> Oz, I would have raised my hand and said, no, "What else you got? How about Macaulay Culkin?" Yeah. Right. Sure. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> if we're all just gonna be silly about this. Right. <laughs> All right, here's the deal. Sheldon is gone, so the tree decorating rules are out the window. <laughs> Wait, so Star Wars and Star Trek characters can go in the same branch? And now let's hear from fangirl herself, Trisha Barr. Well, you know, 2013 actually started a little early for me because I got to talk to Ashley Eckstein um, a little bit before, you know, at the end of 2012 about the year of the fangirl, so... That ended up being one of my highlights. That is amazing. Oh, hey. And we sort of found each other through that. Yeah, that's true. I know. There you go. (laughs) Fangirls just uh, seem to find each other, I think. Well, I think it accomplished its goal and made a community. And then, um, you know, and then I ended up doing all this podcasting, which is, I guess, my 2013 ended up being that kind of adventure into that. So, then I had Assembly of Geeks, and now I am just recorded the second episode of Fangirls Going Rogue, and we interviewed Ashley, so that sort of rounded out the year. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> and then um, there was a, one of the uh, Fangirls of the Day was Janine Spenlow. She, she's an author, um, and I was a big Star Wars fan also, and she's in a writing group with Aaron Alston and... Uh-huh. Mike Stackpole. And so I met her and I ended up joining her Kickstarter, which is women writing about an anthology about stories about female characters. And so I got to join that Kickstarter and it was funded in three days. Wow. So, yeah, we're still going on, but that was really cool. So my stretch goal is coming up. So uh, hopefully I'll have a short story in there, too. Oh, exciting. What um, Can you say for our listeners what the Kickstarter campaign is called? Yes, it's called Athena's Daughters, and it's all female writers um, writing short stories about female protagonists. Not necessarily good, not, but some are heroes, some are antiheroes, all different types. Um, and it's sci-fi fantasy. Uh, you know, it was actually it was a really great year. So, And then got to my couple of insider articles for the Star Wars Insider. I got to talk about Padme and Leia, some of my favorite characters. And then it just seemed like this whole year, you know, with uh, Catching Fire and Gravity doing so well and Frozen doing so well, it seems like the year that people are finally figuring out that, you know, that fangirls are awesome and that, you know, stories about girl characters can do really well. And I'm excited to see a Disney princess movie where people are like, yay. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And by that, you mean Frozen? Yes, Frozen. Yes. Um, And then the last really cool thing was my niece. It was, I feel like my last um, person I needed to convert to Star Wars. And we took her to Disney and she saw Jedi Training Academy and she's four. So she's just old enough to do it. And she's like, I have to do that after we did Star Tours. So she takes karate and Mm. she went and did it and Darth Vader got up there and she did not cow to him. (laughs) I (sighs) whacked him with that lightsaber, let me tell you. You taught her well. (laughs) So she's like, can I do it again? I'm like, well, you know, you're four, so you've got a few more years and you can keep coming back. (laughs) I would just, I would like one day, like them to say, okay, we're going to let adults do it and just see what happens. Oh Oh my gosh. (laughs) There'd be a line as long as for episode seven. Yeah. (laughs) Was there anything in 2014 that you considered a low point in fandom? There were some things I... I am still waiting for what I would call the, you know, the, the Star Wars story that really, you know, excites me and wants me to. I remember running to the bookstore and running to the comic store, and I started to feel that about um, the legacy comics. Like I want to know what's happening in that storyline, and 
you know, but other than that, I haven't gotten any, you know, there weren't any novels I just had to rush out and get. And so I'm, I'm waiting for that kind of to get that feeling back. So that, that, that didn't happen this year for me. And, okay. and um, but so, I think that, you know, a lot of it has to do with everything sort of just grinding to a halt as we wait. <laughs> Ultimately, like the Clone Wars was kind of shocking, you know, because we weren't really prepared for yes. that to happen. It was sort of like, you know, it was like you yanked know, out if from you under know us. The show's going to end, you can sort of, you know, agree with it and let go of it. And it was just like, wow, okay, what happened? Um, but mm. in the end, I like that Ahsoka had a had an arc and it tied up. So, um, you know, it's this year has been hard. Just the hard parts have been, you know, the waiting and wanting to hear the news <laughs> and. You know, I think it's all <laughs> we're going to get it in spades probably next year. Or so, yeah, knowing J.J. Abrams, we'll get a little by little by little until we finally mm-hmm. realize that Khan is going to be the bad guy for episode seven. <laughs> <laughs> hey, kids. I heard on the news that an airline pilot spotted Santa's sled on its way in from New York. Oh. 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 You serious, Clark? Next up, it's Bald Solo. So my favorite fan highlight of this entire year um, was uh, my most recent podcast. My friends Terry and Evra um, let their little girls, Avery and Sydney, who are uh, eight and nine years old, who have just seen Star Wars, um, (laughs) they let me interview them. And that was an absolute blast, um, as you can imagine, because... You're sitting down with a genuine, it's like a genuine time machine that you get to go in vicariously through the eyes of these two kids. And you get to look at Star Wars again through the lens of a child. And that's just, I mean, that's where we all started, most of us at least. So that was an absolute blast to talk to them. You know, and they're asking all the fun questions that you were thinking about as a kid, like, one of my favorites was, and it took me right back when they said lifesaver. So <laughs> I said lifesaver. I don't know if you did. Did you guys say lifesaver when you no, were little? No, I was um, old enough to. Oh, yeah. you're get cooler it right than away. me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but that's yeah, stuff like eight years yeah. old. I, I could read, and I saw the T in lightsaber. Oh, come on! Well, I, I did. <laughs> I went. I went to a good school. Oh. oh wow. <laughs> I, not, I'm just saying that's not I, I that's knew not nice. Was a candy, so I knew they weren't fighting with candy. Mm. <laughs> it only made sense when we were actually recording. They were referring to the famous scene in the uh, Mos Eisley Cantina um, with uh, Obi Wan Kenobi, and I do not have the cool points, Richard. You probably know this alien's name that has his arm chopped off. Ponda Baba. Ponda Baba, that's right. I say Baba, that's right. Ponda Baba. Well, as we called him back in the 70s and 80s, Walrus Man. Walrus Man, yes. So your favorite fan moment of 2013 was being able to teach these kids all about Star Wars and walk Well, they taught it. me, man. I'd say they taught me more. And you know what was cute that nobody sees is they would raise their hands in the air. <laughs> that's so cute. And I loved how so. their favorite planet was Naboo. Yeah. They actually, love Naboo. They want to go there. Yeah, yeah. I do too. Like, that's my favorite planet. <laughs> Who wouldn't want to go hang out in Naboo? I don't know. And then their favorite scene was, I guess, was it the love scene they were describing? Like, the, the Sound of Music scene. They're running across yeah, the Yeah, I misinterpreted that after the fact. I realized later uh-huh. that I was thinking of the arena fight scene right, when they right. were and asking me girls about the aliens. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> little girls don't like the arena fight yeah, and scene. And that's Geonosis. I was on the wrong planet. <laughs> <laughs> little girls so. like when the, the, the guy and the girl are running around in the grass together. <laughs> oh, yeah. I loved their uh, interpretation of the ages of Anakin and Padme. Yes. That was hilarious. Mm-hmm. Like. She's 18 and he's eight in A Phantom Menace. I went, really? All right. <laughs> <laughs> so then other than being able to walk through Star Wars with your two new friends, what other highlights did you have of 2013? I'm not trying to um, to suck up to you guys, but you guys were a huge highlight of 2013's <laughs> meeting meeting the two of you and uh, making that connection because uh, before I met you guys, I had no... Um, 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 relationship with another uh, group of podcasters. So um, that, awesome. that's that been a highlight for me. 
Yeah. All right, we're like, done. Good night, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Great, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> I have to say that the, we did it. We did a podcast, and my favorite story of all was the the saga of your adventures in getting into Skywalker Ranch. <laughs> and my still go to is how you pulled up and tried to Jedi mind trick the guard <laughs> into getting into Skywalker Ranch. That was my. That was just. My favorite story. Hey. Now, non-Star Wars uh, related, I do have another big uh, highlight for me in 2013. I by no means um, to uh, to any of my guests that are uh, have been on my show that are listening to your podcast right now. I certainly am not trying to snub anybody. That's not I'm not including in this list, but but I thoroughly enjoyed the um, the uh, comic book series that I did with my uh, my buddy Seth. I mean, just going through every single age because you know that one was more for me. He's a friend of mine that has a a. It's it's like how you have uh, Richard. You have this this uh, like command of the Wikipedia. It's like it's <laughs> downloaded into your brain. <laughs> he has that for comic books. He can just go and go and go. And we were hanging out one night. We had we had gotten done playing uh, D&D. And he and some other friends were just going on about um, uh, the Avengers and the X-Men and the Fantastic Four and how those three teams are so different. And, and it was interesting. Like the basic gist of the conversation was that, you know, it's funny how the um the avengers will show up and they'll save the day and destroy everything around them in the process but everybody's like yay the avengers captain america is so hunky and thor's biceps yes 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 <laughs> and then when the fantastic four shows up it's like oh that ben Grimm, he's ugly <laughs> that's all they can say or the x-men mutants <laughs> all right so now let's turn tables and tell us what you think the low point in fandom was in 2013 for me, the low point in fandom, I just feel like in general, um, actually, if, uh, to expand on it, I think in general this year, there's been a lot of discussion of um, girls and their, and I hate to use this term because I don't think that they have any kind of a different place other than men have uh, in, in fandom. I think that pe people, regardless of gender, should be treated the same in terms of access and um, enthusiasm in fandom, but... It's been a hot button issue this year, I think. Uh, I don't know. What do you guys think? I think that the whole, the, the issue of treat the way women are treated in terms of cosplay, etiquette, um, the whole fake geek girl thing that was uh, kind of on fire. And I, I applauded Will Wheaton for the way he handled that online. His video is great. Well, there's um, so, so many thought, different you know. levels of quote unquote geekdom that if a girl just likes a comic book or just likes a movie, she can call herself a geek. But then there are some people who would say, oh, if you can't name this character and where he's from and what right. organization he's with, then you're not a true geek. Yeah. Well, who's to say see, yeah. what level of geek they're trying to be? Maybe they just like the movie or the TV show or the comic book. Yeah. I completely agree with you, and I completely disagree with the gatekeeper attitude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, exactly. Oh, That's a good oh, term. Oh, I yeah. Mean, oh, I. Oh, I am the grand... Pooba yeah. of geekdom, and I <laughs> hold the keys to. I'm going to say your, who was a geek and who was not. <laughs> these fandoms are what 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 should bring people together. Like yes. exactly what happened with us. I I saw yeah, you had a point. podcast, and I tweeted, "Oh, you have a podcast too," and and that like started this whole big conversation, and now we're great friends. And it wasn't like you sat there and wanted to test my Wars. knowledge no, or anything. No, right? It's like so. all of a sudden we realized we're both we're all on the same page. And so yeah. we all started podcasting together and st with Star Wars as the main base. And so we all feel I, like we know each other that much better. I completely agree. And I understand the objections of those with that attitude. I understand them. I don't agree with them, but I understand them. And I think it's important for people to try to understand them um, so that instead of this being a thing that is is fought over it's something that can be discussed in an adult way and then perhaps everybody can just move forward uh with some kind of accord i think that what what orig originated as a very underground uh, uh lifestyle which was playing D, D or watching star wars or reading comic books um you know gaming all those things if you did that 
you were perceived in a certain way and you were probably living, you know, the whole living in your mom's basement. You've never had a girlfriend. Um, you know, you, you have a pocket protector and you have your glasses are taped up and you're, you're good at math, all those stereotypes. And, there, th- those stereotypes are there for a reason. I, I, it doesn't mean that th- that's a bad. I don't think it's a bad thing. See, I, I was called a geek and a nerd in high school, but I never, I laughed because I never thought it was. Yes, I am. I didn't take it as an insult. Like, yeah, I am. It's like saying my shirt is green. It is green. <laughs> yes, I am a nerd. Um, so I, I've always felt like that group, uh, that grew up in a certain period of time, went through some, um, some uh, uh lack of acceptance, some hazing, so to speak, and. Their feeling is, well, no, this is an elite group. This is something we paid our dues. And how dare you be this uh, person that comes off the street and all of a sudden decides. But you know what? They got to get over it because there are new people that want to get into these things. And I think it's awesome. I love meeting someone who is just getting into Star Wars or comics or whatever. I mean, I just think it's awesome. And uh, I think people should be ambassadors for fandom, not gatekeepers. If a girl wants to get dressed up in a Slave Leia outfit or as Lara Croft or as Starbuck from Battlestar Galactor, whatever she wants to dress as, the Scarlet Witch, more power to her. If a guy wants to dress as the Scarlet Witch, great, dude, go for it. You know what? It's it. Who Who is to say what is and what isn't acceptable. I think that the more exposure, the more people get into it, I think be positive. Yes. And the situation say, yes, I accept you. Let's, uh, let's get you pointed in the right direction. Let's get you grouped up with people that are into what you're becoming, uh, passionate about and, and get you on track to learning more. And then you pass it on. I think because if there are people at the end of the day, it's like, uh, I don't know if you're, there's a movie called The Right Stuff and they say no no uh, bucks, no Buck Rogers. At the end of the day, no money funneling into this industry. We won't get new content. Mm-hmm. That's why like, I was excited about Disney making Star Wars 7 because with all their resources and a fresh uh, set of eyes from J.J. Abrams and a fresh production team and we're getting new content. We're getting a new Star Wars movie. That was my reaction. So I was actually appalled when I saw people like, oh my God, why, why are you such a commergent? You New Star Wars movie. How can that not make you happy? Yeah. I mean, come on. People are going to so, complain no matter what anyone yeah. does. So what do you think can be done to reverse the geekdom bullying? I think people that, like like yourselves, um, that, that are positive and that embrace fandom, I think those people need to speak up because I think they're the majority. I really do think that the, the, the negative voices are in the minority. The negative voices, the pessimists, they're always the loudest people in the room or the ones that get the most attention to pick no matter what yeah yeah the ones that possibly get the most attention no no i want an official red undercover and i should do it get rid of my leg rifle you'll shoot your eye out kid and finally sean obi sean crosby so what were some of your high points in fandom for 2013 you know i've i've had a few and these are this is sort of you know my my personal kind of set of high points of course so just background on me i do about 160 charity events a year as obi-wan kenobi i'm really focused on the costuming aspects of star wars and sharing that fandom with everybody and uh and so you know some of the the things for me the probably the biggest is that star wars celebration is coming to anaheim and, you know, it's here in Los Angeles. It's across the street from Disneyland, which is going to be terrific. And if Disney and, uh, and Lucasfilm will pull together with, uh, with Reed Entertainment to pull this show off, they could do some really tremendous things. We could conceivably get that Star Wars day at Disneyland that we've been wanting for years. The planning on our side, because the... Um, Sunrider base, which is the local Rebel Legion base, and the Southern California Garrison, which are the the um, uh, 501st Imperial Garrison that are here. We're already planning stuff, and we're going to try to m- make it as cool a show as we can from a fan standpoint. And so, you know, this this big snowball has been pushed off the top of the Matterhorn. It's rolling down. It's collecting snow. It's getting bigger, and we all have to be ready for 2015. And so, that announcement that they they made in what was it, June or July of, of this year, has pretty much colored every decision that we've been making for the rest of the year. 
Now, it does deprive my car group, the Road Squadron group of Star Wars cars, the opportunity to do a grand road trip again like we did for Celebration 6 because it's it's literally a 40-minute drive from my house to, <laughs> to get there. So uh, and Apparently, you've never driven down the 5 in the afternoon. There, there's a road oh, trip. Well, that's what surface streets are for. I mean, come on. <laughs> I have a Star Wars car with laser guns. You don't think people get out of my way? <laughs> <laughs> But that was that's probably the 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 highest point for me of of my year. But there there have been others on on varying levels. Like I got you know called up on stage with Mark Hamill at the at the um, uh, anniversary of Return of the Jedi this year at the Egyptian Theater, and that was kind of a fun thing. Wow. Uh, some of the libraries that we do events for, um, they had the Star Wars exhibit where Science Meets Imagination. Uh, down here in Santa Ana, and that was probably the third time I'd been involved with that exhibit. And be- between helping those guys with that exhibit and helping the Rancho Cucamonga Library with their Star Wars events that we do every year, both of these organizations won the National Medal of Excellence in Libraries and Museums from the president. Wow. And so – you know, us going down and doing Star Wars stuff and hanging out in costume and doing educational programs and making big days of it helped these guys win these prestigious medals. And, you know, it's these things just sort of reinforce the power that we have as fans and the difference that we can make in our community, which is really cool. And, you know, the the way that that we get to be with with Lucasfilm and, and with Disney for some of their events, it's really kind of neat to be these people who are just like, wow, I, I love this so much that I'm building costumes and I'm doing whatever. And then to have the company, you know, look at, at us as a group of people whose passion can then be, you know, utilized. So were there, were there any big surprises for you in 213 20. in terms of fandom? I can't really think of anything that sort of knocked me on my can. I mean, it's anything that that surprised me usually comes in the form of a disappointment for something they're not doing that we thought they were going to do. Like, right. um, there's been a lot of talk of star Wars land at Disneyland mm. and you know, we're taking this out we're putting the millennium Falcon in and we're going to have a speeder bike ride and we're going to do this. And I have friends who work for Disney who are like, yeah, that's still happening. But all over the press, they're like, no, it's on, it's on hold and it's not going to happen now. And that kind of thing. Yeah, Disney- and usually the things that, that I get, surprised about are are disappointments <laughs> things like what do you mean you're not going to do that anymore oh man mm-hmm. what would you consider the low point of fandom in 2013 well I, I i'll start with one that's kind of a little bit of a of a high point and a low point for me because and then again these are all kind of personal because my fandom is extremely personal and so in terms of like you know the in, entire group of of you know, the world fandom, I kind of take things closer to home. Uh, we took a road trip up to Oregon with the, the new Star Wars car to meet with some people who were doing a Relay for Life charity event to raise money for cancer. And the, the event was a grand success. Usually they make about $20,000. They made about 65000 this year. Uh, we had my car on display with a whole bunch of other movie cars and the 501st came down and the rebel legion came down it was it was really great and one of the primary forces behind this was a was a guy named Grant Krim who is 18 and he's had cancer like four ways from sunday so far and he's only 18 but he organized this event and his his best friend was Natalie Hill now Natalie was not a Star Wars fan, but she knew that she had pretty limited time with cancer. And very high on her bucket list was watch all six Star Wars movies because she'd never seen them at all. And so she was a fan who had just come to the fold. She really loved them, thought everything was great. We went up there in costume. I took the, um, I took the Yoda puppet with me and... You know, we took a bunch of pictures and stuff. And and very sadly, the the reason I, I think of her is today would have been her 18th birthday. Aww. And she passed away just a, a little while ago, uh, about a month ago, maybe just shy of her 18th. Really unfortunate. But but, you know, Star Wars fandom is all subjective. And for her to come to it so late in in her life and then to be 
so enthralled with it only to, you know, kind of pass away so shortly after is really kind of a bummer. But so that's that, that was like a high point and a low point <laughs> for me. Now, before we dive into 2014, let's take a little intermission with Obi Sean's soon to be Life Day classic. It's beginning to look like Life Day by Bith Crosby. <laughs> this is a work in progress. Enjoy. It's beginning to look a lot like Life Day Everywhere I go The Wookiees are wearing red Robes that show just their heads Carrying their shiny orbs that glow It's beginning to look a lot like Life Day Growling fills the air and the happiest things you'll see Are the Wookiees that will be In your home tree lair Mother is baking the bantha She's making from Gormanda's old recipe Grandpa is carving X wings So alarming from fresh limbs He's cut from the tree Great games enjoy each girl and boy For this festivity It's beginning to look a lot like Life Day Everywhere you roam Akmin has been serving cheer To travelers far and near As they leave the cantina for home It's beginning to look a lot like Life Day At the Tree of Life we'll meet and promise to you and me that here in our galaxy we will all be free. It's beginning to look a lot like Life Day Growling voices roar And the Wookiees and you and me Mark this day so joyously Forever It's life day once more. Great stuff there, Obi Sean. We're really looking forward to hearing more of your life day classics in the future. So let's look ahead to 2014. What are you looking forward to, Richard? In 2014, I'm looking forward to Star Wars Rebels. Yay. I cannot wait for this. So when when Clone Wars was taken away, of course, I was disappointed. But when I saw what we were getting with Rebels, which takes place just 14 years before A New Hope, so we get to see Ralph McQuarrie's paintings come to life. And I'm just chomping at the bit for this. And this is, gonna, this is going to premiere in, in the fall with a one-hour movie on Disney XD. Oh, so it's going to be on TV, the one-hour movie. Yes. yes. Okay. Okay, I didn't realize that. You know, Disney does that for a lot of their franchises, like Sophia the First also started with a one-hour yes, movie. I remember that. No, you don't. No, I don't. In fact, I still haven't seen it, <laughs> the first one. <laughs> I need to see it. Anyway, um, that's, yeah. I'm Anything with Ralph, Ralph McQuarrie involved, I, he's not involved, obviously, but like his paintings, oh, his he's artwork. involved. Posthumously. Yes, yes. All right, so what are you looking forward to in 2014? Well, first and foremost, come the end of January and the end of February, I'm doing, again, the Tinkerbell Half Marathon at Disneyland, followed by, in February, the Princess Half Marathon in Disney World. And you are coming to that, Richard. So is my parents and my friends. So... Um, it's going to be super exciting. It's the first time I'll be doing a Disney World run Disney race. 
One cool thing about this is Run Disney, if you do a marathon or a half marathon event in Disneyland and Disney World in the same year, you get a special extra medal called the Coast to Coast Medal. And what's that medal look like? It's, you know, it's really pretty. It's blingy. It's gold. Do I get one? No. I want one. Because you're not doing the Tinkerbell one. Oh, they don't need to know that. Yeah, no, you're not doing that. And then I'm also getting another medal for doing a 10K and then a half marathon the next day at the Princess Half Marathon. And that's called the Glass Slipper Challenge. And it's a special medal with a glass slipper in it. So cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can see why you're looking forward to that. It's all about the bling. I wish you the best. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that shotgun's going to go off. You're going to be so far ahead of me. <laughs> Maybe for my birthday, I need to ask for a metal display. Why are you telling me? Tell Santa. Okay. I'll tell Santa. I don't handle that. <laughs> yes. And a couple of other uh, things I'm looking forward to mm -hmm. is Captain America. <gasps> yes. The, the Winter, Winter Soldier. Soldier. Because I, I, I really want to see the Falcon. Chris Evans, right? Oh. No, the Falcon. Oh, the fa oh okay. Oh. <laughs> As a kid, I used to love that character, the Falcon. Yeah, he had a, a great costume. I know there's been a trailer with him in it, and, and I think maybe some early stills. Okay. But I don't want to look at it because I know it's going to be a lot yeah. different from yeah. what I remember with the little Mego figure. That's the, the Mego figure is what I want to. I want to see it on screen. I know I ain't getting it. I know you're not going to get it. I'm prolonging it as long as possible. And plus. Captain America. Mm -hmm. The first Captain America was fantastic. Avengers was fantastic. And now I know this is going to be fantastic. Yay. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it too. I'm also looking forward to Maleficent. Who Maleficent is my favorite Disney villain. So I'm excited to see that come to life. Oh, me too. Maleficent. You said it right. Maleficent? Good job. Oh, first You were time trying ever. to mess it up, no, too. No, I wasn't. No, no I wa You were I, I can never say that right, so I'm trying to focus in my head. You did it. Maleficent? Maleficent. No. Oh, man. Mal <laughs> no. As well as Maleficent. There you go. I'm, I'm also looking forward to, as a fan, uh, meeting more fans mm -hmm. in, in 2014. Because I know a lot of people have said they're coming to Disneyland for a visit in the summertime. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to meeting them. Yeah, let us know when you're going to be around. Now let's see what our guests are looking forward to in 2014. Kristen Hackett, you're up. I'm really looking forward to the, uh, the Netflix series, though. Yeah, when is that coming out? Um, I think the first ones are going to start coming out next year. And I know the first first one is Daredevil, who like just so happens to be my second favorite superhero of all time. Um, so I'm really, really, really looking forward to that. And the person that uh, co-wrote it and is directing it also did Cabin in the Woods, which I loved. Ooh. Wait, Joss Whedon? Yep. Oh, no, no. Well, he did it with Joss Whedon. His name's Drew Goddard or Goddard or I'm not sure how to say his last name, but uh, he co-wrote Cabin in the Woods with Joss Whedon. And then, of course, Amazing Spider-Man 2. Yes, because Spider-Man is your favorite uh, yes, comic book is. character. Mm-hmm. What do you think about the, the new trailer they just released? I loved it. I've watched it so many times. <laughs> just like on repeat. <laughs> you know what? I, I, I've always been a huge, huge fan of Rhino and Electro. And I, just from what I've seen, I just, I'm afraid to watch it because I'm, I'm just not going to get like the lizard from the first movie. <laughs> I, I, I cried. I'm in the theater. I'm just crying. This is not my lizard. Where's his purple pants and his trench coat and his green skin? This is like baby Godzilla. <laughs> mm -hmm. There uh, are definitely a lot of villains in it, uh, which is kind of worrisome, but I mm -hmm. felt better after I watched the trailer. Um, and I'm like, I'm just thrilled to have Gwen Stacy in a movie because she's amazing. So I'm glad to like see her relationship with Peter as opposed to MJ's because she's always the one that's like portrayed in everything. Right. You get a different spin on it. Yeah. So, spoiler alert, is this I know. I'm hoping that's not going to happen. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll end that there. <laughs> uh, um, this might be Gwen Stacy's last movie. Yeah. I know they have her in the outfit and everything, but... Oh, no. Oh, that says it all. <laughs> then we know what's happening. I'm in denial. Uh. <laughs> so... You were saying that the Daredevil Netflix TV series, that's going to be the, the first 
of the series? I believe so. Um, it's Daredevil, Iron Fist, Luke Cage, and Jessica Jones. Right, right. Yeah, the Daredevil one is the one I'm looking forward to the most. I love Daredevil. Me too. He's amazing. In 2014, is there something that you're on the fence with in terms of, of your fandom? Um, not yet. I usually try to be optimistic about everything until I see it, and then I'll form an opinion. Um, even hearing about, like... Ben Affleck Batman, which I think is a really weird choice. <laughs> I'm still being optimistic about it. Yeah, I'm I'm in your same camp. I'm optimistic. Yeah, I think it's better. Like, because I don't know, I don't like to dwell on things and have. I hate how like everybody immediately complains about everything mm-hmm. that they haven't seen yet. Because there have been a ton of things that people have thought were going to be terrible, and then they turned out to be great. So I don't think it's worth it to waste the energy being negative. I always go back to the ni- 1989 Batman when everyone thought Michael Keaton was never going to be Bruce Wayne. Mm-hmm. And after seeing him in movies like Clean and Sober, I knew he was going to be the perfect choice. <laughs> so we always go back to that. Remember what happened with Michael Keaton? Now we all love him, don't we? <laughs> Very true. So what other superheroes are you looking forward to in, in 2014? I'm definitely looking forward to seeing Wonder Woman in a movie. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. do you feel like Man Man of Steel 2 is becoming Justice League of America 1? Um, it could. It definitely could. I I definitely hope that it was better than the first Man of Steel cuz I hated that. Oh, <laughs> us too. Thank you. <laughs> Superman is a boy scout. He's not brooding. We'll go to Batman if we want brooding. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. There was never a time during that movie when I felt hopeful. Mm-mm. <laughs> So do you think you'll do any other reality fan-based TV series? Um, anything is possible. Um, but I don't know. We still haven't heard about if anything is happening with the season two of Fangasm. So um, before I can really like look into anything else, I have to know about that first. Um, so everything, like I said, is just kind of up in the air. Yeah. Have you been a- <laughs> approached at all? Um, I have been approached for a few other things, um, but I can't commit to anything until I know if my contract has ended um, Mm. with sci-fi, so I'm not sure. (laughs) What kind of things have you been approached with? Um, Not allowed to actually talk about them yet because some of them are still in development. Are they sci-fi channel related? Um, I'm not sure. I don't know if I'm allowed to say. (laughs) Is it an Apple TV thing? I'm going to pull it out of her. No, you're not going to get anything out of me. (laughs) No, don't worry. We've stopped recording. So go ahead. Tell us everything. (laughs) Well, hopefully when you know something, you'll let us know. I will. All right, Kristen. Well, thank you very much for joining us on our 2013 wrap-up, looking into 2014. Thank you for having me. I'm Kristen Hackett of Sci-Fi's Fangasm, and I'm skywalking through Neverland. Now let's come back to Lauren and Josh. Um, I'm really looking forward to Big Hero 6, an uh, animated movie coming out next year um, from Disney. It's like a, basically the first Marvel animation movie that Disney's doing, and it looks really, really cool. Um, just a little bit we saw at the panel looked really awesome, so I'm really looking forward to that. I am entirely excited for Maleficent to come out. Yes. Angelina Jolie just looks amazing and fierce and just totally flawless and she did the maleficent maleficent laugh and it was just just oh it chills up your spine it was so good yeah were you in the panel where she came out oh yeah Yeah. Yeah. it was so great (laughs) yeah i was so i wasn't sure about maleficent or her as maleficent until i heard her speak at that panel and say Mm -hmm. how maleficent was her favorite character growing up and she just so identifies with it and she misses the horns yeah, yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> it was so great, and it's awesome to know that when they're playing them, they're also a huge fan. Yeah, so you know, there's a lot of love that goes into it too. It makes it really special. Yeah, that's why I was excited when I found out that J.J. Abrams was going to direct the next Star Wars movie because he's a fan. He's gonna really take care of it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We're big fans of his because we just we love Lost, we love Fringe, and anything that he does, we just obsess over so we're really excited for that as well is there anything non-movie wise that you're looking forward to 
we're looking forward to, to definitely checking out the rest of uh, Once Upon a Time as it comes out through um, television. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm, I'm always curious to play like Disney Interactive is, is a really, um, really awesome uh, division of Disney. And um, to, this year they brought Disney Infinity, which was a huge highlight of my Disney year. Um, I love Disney Infinity. And next year um, I'm looking forward to seeing what Disney Interactive comes up with to add on to that game. And then um, in years future, uh, in the future, uh, they're going to make a, more sequels to that and uh, expand that universe a little bit. And I think that's going to be pretty awesome too. So I'm looking forward to seeing what Disney Interactive comes up with in 2014 for sure. I play with a friend um, here in Vegas online on Xbox Live and we just literally run around as Disney characters and create whatever we want to create. You get all these kinds of different terrain and you can create um, just any kind of thing. He made like a one day he was bored and he made an aquarium and the whole <laughs> level is inside of an aquarium and he used all these Disney inspired um, pieces of terrain and things like that. And y- you get all these really cool knockables like the cave of wonders entrance from Aladdin. You can like place that and then use that as part of your building process and stuff like that. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah. It's really cool. Cause they have all these different characters that come out and you can pick whatever you want to play. They have Mike Wazowski. So they have a monsters university level. You can play. They have an Incredibles level. You can play cars, pirates of the Caribbean. So it's really cool. And they've recently released several characters for, um, other levels they have some of the frozen characters oh. yeah. uh, i've seen rapunzel as one of them oh yes yeah yep. i'm excited yeah. about that this but, almost uh, sounds like disney goes minecraft basically it kind of it, it really is it, it, it feels kind of like minecraft it's just not 8-bit <laughs> but um <laughs> but yeah definitely my friend he was playing as rapunzel the other night and hit me with the frying pan like 20 times <laughs> that's awesome so, <laughs> it's, okay it's a blast. now i want it's, that game <laughs> It's a lot of fun. It's really cool because where else are you going to see like Randall Boggs from Monsters University riding in like Cinderella's carriage (laughs) and he whips out Carl um, Fredrickson's little walker cane and just hits things with it. So it's really cool. They just combined like the old movies and new movies all kind of together and it's a lot of fun. It's a really cool concept. Nice. Now, is there anything in 2014 that you're that you're thinking might go bad? Uh, man, you know, I'm I'm not nothing really comes to mind. But uh, I know I'm I'm bummed that there's no Pixar movie next year. Mm. Uh, now that the Good Dinosaur has been pushed back, so I'm kind of bummed about that. But um, as far as like thinking something may not work out as well, I'm interested in, see, in seeing Into the Woods um, because there's a couple characters in that movie that have I have never seen like sing before. Uh, I'm interested in the movie itself. I'm kind of leery on how it's going to play out, but um, but it looks interesting. So I guess nope. we'll kind of see. But I said that about Oz. and What is that? It didn't work out so well. Into um, the Woods is a musical. Yeah, they've redone the Broadway musical Into the Woods, and it it's c- similar to Once Upon a Time where they it's a bunch of fairy tale characters that come together and interact with each other. So there's um, Little Red Riding Hood, Cinderella, um, Rapunzel's in it a little bit. There's the princes um, and then kind of giants happen and people get separated and they all have to kind of come together. Um, I loved it. It's I've only seen it. It has um, Bernadette Peters in it and she's absolutely phenomenal. So I'm kind of anxious to see how this new yeah. version of it is right. going to kind of happen with it's modern a, day people. It's another Johnny Depp Disney collaboration. He's uh, He plays the wolf in it, and uh, the director from the last Pirates of the Caribbean movie is directing it. So oh, it's, boy. You, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's, that's where I'm kind of I was of excited like, until now. Yeah. yeah. It's like, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Are we going to understand it? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> So we'll we'll try to think happy thoughts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and hope yeah, for the I know. Best. I know how that is when you you really identify with a certain actor who played a role. Like you said, Bernadette Peters does does just an awesome job. Well, like The Sound of Music, I've never been able to watch that as a play anywhere because I think Julie Andrews is just the epitome of what it should sound like. And anybody who sounds different, you know, I just don't like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, so. I'm totally with you on that. Yeah. <laughs> 
just like the. I refu- I refused to watch the one that they yeah. had live the other day. Yeah. I was like, I'm sorry, <laughs> I, just, I just you know can't what? do it. I have that saved on my DVR, but I just find it hard. I like. I'm unwilling to watch it just because yeah. it's it was, not. But it was really, awkward. it was really inventive seeing James Franco playing Maria von Trapp. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is this the right movie? No, <laughs> he, he's in everything these days. Yeah. I just thought I'd take a shot in the dark. Yeah, awesome. I meant to DVR it, but I figured I would probably have to drink heavily just to get yeah. through it. So I yeah. decided not to. <laughs> Um, 2013 was amazing, so we're hoping for the same in 2014. I have no doubt that we'll be amazed and anxious to travel to the theater and to the parks again and, and see what's uh, what's going to come from everything. But um, Frozen was amazing in 2013. Got to throw that out there because we didn't talk about Frozen, but oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, it, was, it, was it was phenomenal. Awesome. So With James um, Franco. Little, yeah, we saw that. With James right? Franco. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, 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 you know, I was hoping that he was going to play Olaf, but... Uh, <laughs> Apparently they got someone better. So <laughs> this is Lauren. This is Josh. And we are skywalking, skywalking through, through Neverland. Neverland. All right, y'all. Well, thank you very much for our year end wrap up. And we look forward to talking to you again. Definitely, thank you guys. for having us. We had a lot of fun. Look, Daddy, teacher says every time a bell rings, an angel gets his wings. Trisha, what's up? So what are you looking forward to for 2014? Well, everything as far as the news for um, that, you know, what we're going to get for the sequel trilogy. And I, I, you know, I'm excited to see the bonus content um, if and when it ever comes. (laughs) Yeah, keep on waiting. Um, I'm really excited for for the opportunities with fangirls going rogue to you know do more things with that podcast and you know we've had you know already two great guests with Kat Tabor and Ash Lextine so I'm excited that you know we will get to talk to more Star Wars um VIPs Carrie Fisher that would the, the, I'm gonna get to interview her for fangirls going rogue <laughs> that would be awesome <laughs> I don't know how you can top that would, I think she would be really fun <laughs> Yeah, she oh, would. Wow. <laughs> Just don't have any kids in the room. <laughs> For me personally, my you know my novel Wind is coming out, and um, at, really at the tail end of this year. But we're going to do sort of like a running start into 2014. So I feel like 2014 is going to be, especially the front part of it, really getting to talk to people and share and ha- you know let them finally read this story and. You know, I'm so used to, you know, the fanfic days where you could write something and get immediate feedback. And I've gotten, I have beta readers, so I have a small group of people who have read the story and given me feedback. But I'm waiting to sort of be able to do that with everybody. That's so exciting. So are you getting it published? Like, are you going to be doing a tour or anything like that? Um, not a tour. I'm, I'm, it'll be published as a paperback okay. and, um, I'm doing that through Amazon and then also it'll come out in, um, an ebook form so that, you know, it's a big, it's a, like a game of Thrones size book. So it's a big, big book. So if people prefer to have the, you know, the electronic the ebook version, that'll be available through Kindle first, and then we'll roll it out and in other ebook forms. But it's all formatted. The cover's done. I have artwork coming um, with some of my characters because one of the important things for me was diversity, and it's hard to explain in a sci-fi story that you have that's not set on earth um that but my planet is very earth-like that there's a you know a cast of diverse characters so i decided to get some artwork done that'll show that you know i have men and women and different races and different cultures and i thought that would be a cool way to sort of highlight that nice when do you find time to do all this (laughs) (laughs) are you writing in your sleep I write in my sleep, yes. No, I write when um, I write a lot of the time when I'm riding my horse. Um, <laughs> or, or drive. How can you read I'm your sure. notes? <laughs> it, um, and I also I have a little bit of insomnia, um, and I tend to find you know a writer's it's always best funny friend. You, you hear artists say like that they. They, you know, they drink or take drugs, but I say exhaustion is the best writing oh. tool. 
<laughs> it frees up the brain and you just things you're like, oh, I, I wake up wake up i mean this is normal for me to wake up and type like notes to myself on my phone or um send myself emails for my phone or have a scratch pad so it people who like know me they're used to me like all of a sudden at dinner just being like oh and i walk out with my phone and you know and it's <laughs> not personal i'm just like oh i've never done it like in a podcast or something where you know <laughs> it's like oh i have to go but it, it does happen when you write stories so these random you know, brilliant flashes. <laughs> so is there anything in 2014 that you're kind of teetering on as a fan? Something that like you think, yeah, that could go either way. Like it might well, not go well. <laughs> well, I, what, <laughs> you know, we have casting announcements, so you never know if it's oh. going to be like, you know, yeah. oh, you know. Could always be not... James Franco. You never know. <laughs> right. Well, you know, I, I definitely i am not a, you know, big DC Comics person, but I definitely was like, you know, this year, Ben Affleck, you know, sort of like, hmm, Batman. And, you know, I had one of those moments like, I just, I don't, I don't see it. And then, you know, I, you know, you wonder, am I going to have that moment where you're just like, oh, I don't see it. <laughs> <laughs> can you say where um, our listeners can find you? Yes, um, they can find me on Twitter at Fangirl Cantina and on my blog, it's fangirlblog.com. And for me personally, my book and my writing, it's trishabar.com. And I pretty much tweet all that information. It's available. If you go to Fangirl Cantina on Twitter, you'll, you can go anywhere that I'm doing stuff. But those are the three places. Well, Trisha, it sounds like you got a really busy 2014 ahead of you. And thanks for being on the show. There you go. <laughs> Thank you for having me. This is Trisha Barr from Fangirl Blog, and I'm skywalking through Neverland. Bald Solo. Bam! What are you yes. looking forward to in 2014? Well, um, the big thing in 2014, I think, um, and I, I'm, I assume that you guys are, are going to be uh, doing this as well, and um, I look forward to lots of joint podcasts that could happen <laughs> over this, but the ramping up to Star Wars Episode Seven. Um, uh, I think that what needs to happen, and this is actually a possible live on air, um, you know, uh, uh, idea here, but I think it would be great to do an in-depth uh, discussion of each season of the Clone Wars mm. and then do that in preparation for Rebels, because when does Rebels come out? Mm. Next fall. Next fall. So I think that leading up to next fall, um, you know, perhaps a discussion of each of the seasons of the Clone Wars. Um, pulling the Gennady Tartakovsky stuff out of the vault and talking about those two uh, that were on Cartoon Network back in the day before the Clone Wars. You know those? The guy oh. that did Dexter, and he did the artwork for those. You remember those? Clone Wars series? Yeah, there were two Clone Wars, right. long Clone Wars yeah. movies. Yeah. yeah. And they were done in that Dexter cartoon art oh, style. Oh, I was thinking Dexter, the serial killer? Yeah, I was... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> What does it he would be Dexter great. Cartoon? He would be great. What's that actor's name? He would be great cast in Star Michael Wars. Michael C. Hall? Yeah, Michael C. Hall. He would, he would, what would you cast him as? In episode seven? Yeah. A Sith Lord. A Sith Lord. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he would be well, he, nasty. Because he has he would, that stare. Well, he'd that be great. icy cold stare. Yeah, he'd be great as a turncoat, you know, like an like infiltrator in one camp or the other. Yeah. Like a spy. Yeah. And then it would be also going on with the same theme of yours to look at all the Ralph McQuarrie paintings that yes. Rebels is based on and try to Ooh. see how this is all going to fit into Rebels. I, I would, I, I would, my hope for 2014 is, and, and so on and so on, is I would like to see more positivity, more optimism when it comes to new content coming out. We've got uh, uh, the uh, beginning of 2014 and in the spring to uh, get ready for Rebels and talk all about uh, um, uh, Star Wars 7 and I hope J.J. Abrams is given authorization to let some juicy tidbits out I saw him on Stephen Colbert and he was talking about how he said next year I'll be able to give you some tidbits hmm. he said that okay on Colbert yeah, maybe a little something just yeah, a more tell us it's well, the, two hours and three minutes long the casting we'll get to know I'm sure well that was his answer to Stephen Colbert when he said so let's talk about Star Wars can you tell me anything about it and he goes, it's called Star Wars. <laughs> or it's got Star Wars in the title. <laughs> wow. So is there anything in 2014 that you're 
a low point prediction. What I don't want to see happen. <laughs> um, I don't want to see the bubble burst, so to speak. What I don't want to see happen is like we're riding on the on the high of the uh, Marvel movie uh, machine happening. I don't want to see that bubble burst. I don't want to see them start pumping out quantity over quality. Um, I also don't want to see that with Star Wars. I know, you know, once that Disney's great, um, but as you know, they'll make sequels to beloved classics. Like you've got little mermaid part two and three yeah. and four and five and six and seven. And those aren't necessarily, you know, those weren't necessarily made with production quality in mind. They were made in mind for selling, a sequel to a kid who doesn't really care if it's, you know, this epic masterpiece. And yes, Little Mermaid is an epic masterpiece. I okay? agree. It's one of my favorite Disney movies, <laughs> and I'm proud to say it. I had such a crush on Ariel when I was a kid. Oh, <laughs> oh man. <laughs> I've tried to Bald Solo is not ashamed. ashamed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't want to see quantity over quality start to happen. So, because I, you know, uh, and, and it's, we talked about this a little bit in terms of conventions. You know, they have Kamikaze, which is Stanley's answer to Comic Con becoming this bloated behemoth of a convention that has little to nothing to do with comics anymore. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, in that way, I hope that I also hope that the fandom itself, no matter what it is, doesn't become so star studded or so huge in terms of your outlets like conventions um, so that they're inaccessible to people or that people feel um, put off like, oh, it's too big and I can't get into it. You know, well, Bald Solo, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Richard and Sarah. As always, I, I have a blast when I'm on your show. Thanks for having me on. You're welcome. Well, thanks for being on. This is Bald Solo, and I'm skywalking through Neverland. I like the sound of that. Sean Crosby, bring us home. Is there anything you're looking forward to in 2014 as a fan? I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to maybe everybody ceasing to ask me if I think episode seven is going to be any good. <laughs> and, and I've got this very sort of stock answer going, well, OK, look, you know, Disney did a good job with Avengers and Iron Man and blah, blah, blah. So um, I'm sure it'll be great. What would surprise you most in 2014? Hmm. Well, if uh, if they started allowing set visits on the set of the next Star Wars movie, that would surprise the heck oh, out of me. Oh, there you go. <laughs> um, How do you top that one? And I'd be on a plane to London like, mm -hmm. instantly. Yeah. All right. Well, on that note, thank you. Thank you very much for joining us here on Skywalking Through Neverland. You give us a lot of good stuff to work with. Oh, no worries. My pleasure to talk to you guys as always. And, uh, you know, it's it's as you've surely discovered it's completely difficult to shut me up so uh, <laughs> hopefully there's, there's something worthwhile in there <laughs> no. no well, that, well that's why we came to you because we knew you have a you have a lot of of good things a lot of good input and a different perspective as well yeah yeah, yeah. yay oh, oh. Uh, can you tell fans where to find you uh where to find me yeah if you um uh Currently, you know, if you search for Obi Sean C on just about everything, you can find me on Facebook and Twitter. And I'm always interested in talking to people about the car designs they're doing and their fandom and whatnot. And if you want to listen to uh, the podcast that we're doing, I uh, do a show on HollandRadio.com that's called Docking Bay 94. We are actually live Thursday nights, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And I share the show with, uh, Jeff Solo Donahoe and uh, Joe the Jedi Pavlenko, and we talk video games and geek stuff, and we're easily sidetracked. But if you guys want to call in, you have a topic you want to discuss or anything like that, we're uh, we're open for all that. Call on nice. radio. All right, we'll be there. Beautiful. Right. Sounds great. Oh, uh, thank you, Sean. And if we don't talk to you beforehand, have a happy holiday. Take care, guys, and may the force be with you. Hey, this is Sean Obi Sean Crosby, and I am skywalking through Neverland. Bazinga. Countdown. Stop. I wasn't talking to you. <laughs> I wasn't talking to you. Everyone, look at my face. <laughs> this is not a happy face. <laughs> Even me.
right. So as I was saying, <laughs> countdown, countdown. <laughs> Guess what part of the show this is? The countdown to Celebration Anaheim. All right, take a wild guess there, Sarah. How many more days? Today is December the twenty third. Um, it um, is four hundred and seventy seven days. Oh, you so much! You so cheated. Yeah, I did because so it was sitting right there. Four hundred and seventy seven more days until Celebration Anaheim. That's right. And now, episode seven, less. Than two years. Less than two years. What, 364 days, I believe? I mean, well, 364 plus 365 days? I'll give you a hint. 725. Go. 725 days. And you got it. 725 more days until we'll be sitting in the theater seeing episode seven for our eighth time. Yay. In one day. So that wraps up our last Skywalking Through Neverland for 2013. Ah, episode number 12. Now, next week, Sarah and I are going to Boston for the holidays. So, everyone sit down. we got to take another week off. Uh, we're, sorry. we're sorry. But while we're there, we're not just vacationing. No. Nope. We're also going to be writing the next couple of shows. We're going to be accumulating interviews and putting putting together stuff uh, segments we have in store yeah we're going to richard's old hood where he, we're going to meet some of his old buddies from growing up and i'm looking forward to some of these podcasts that we're gonna some of these interviews we're gonna so do So we'll get this a chance to see star wars fandom through my eyes as a seven eight nine year old back in the 70s and 80s <laughs> yay and our guest once again will be jimmy pruey who was our guest during our halloween episode uh, a few months ago. So everyone, thank you once again. We want to thank our guests this week, Kristen Hackett, Trisha Barr, Bald Solo, Sean Obi-Sean Crosby, Lauren Correa, and Josh Kelly. Also, uh, if you have a little free time over this holiday season and you want to pop on iTunes and give us an iTunes review, if you haven't already, uh, please do. And feel free to comment and like on our skywalkingthroughneverland.com page. From there, you can find all the ways to contact us on Facebook, Twitter, and iTunes and YouTube. Now, I had seen a list of all the top Star Wars podcasts. Mm-hmm. We were not on there. Oh. So please, please share share with a friend. Share with a friend. We, we really want to get out there and reach as many people as possible, really because we want to get in touch with them to share their stories. If you have something that you want to promote, let us know. We're here for you. Before we sign off, I just want to let you know of something you're going to see over our end credits. Uh, it was a music video submitted by one of our listeners, Rob Dellinger. He is part of a band called Whack Magic, and this video, entitled Santa Claus, was a song that he wrote and produced along with his friend, Chris Binnings. You can find it on iTunes, but for now, here you go. So once again, everyone, happy holidays. This is Richard. And this is Sarah. And remember... Never land on Alderaan. you for listening to skywalking through neverland we would love to hear what you thought of the show please send feedback and suggestions you can email us at share at skywalking through neverland.com please visit us at our website skywalking through neverland.com find us on facebook at facebook.com slash skywalking through neverland and on twitter at skywalking pod all material submitted becomes the property of Skywalking Through Neverland and are subject for use on our show. You can help support Skywalking Through Neverland by posting about us on Facebook, Twitter, or just tell another fanboy or girl. We would also really appreciate a five-star review on iTunes. A link to our iTunes page can be found on skywalkingthroughneverland.com. 
Skywalking Through Neverland was created and produced by Richard and Sarah Woloski. Segment producers are David Scale, Richard Woloski, Sarah Woloski, and Mark Agushowitz. Graphic design and website design by Sarah Woloski. Technical advisor is Peter Heitman. Skywalking Through Neverland is not affiliated with Lucasfilm Limited, Disneyland Resorts, or the Walt Disney Company. All names, sounds, and related items of Star Wars and Disney are registered, trademarked, and copyright Lucasfilm Limited and the Walt Disney Company and their respective trademark and copyright holders, all rights reserved. Skywalking Through Neverland is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of Hey Hey Entertainment, copyright 2013, all rights reserved. No part of this show may be repurposed, reproduced, redistributed, or rebroadcasted without the written permission of Hey Hey Entertainment. Sorry, all that had to be said. Goodbye. Live long and prosper. Wait, sorry. May the force be with you. And cut. That's a wrap.